Well, the other thing I think that really hit home and that we should talk about, well, I think, first of all, let's go to FSD. This notion, I mean, Elon mentioned this, and I think he's, he's dead right, and we've talked about this before. He said that we almost feel comfortable allowing people to text and drive. And he said, which is kind of the killer app. And he says, it's already what people want to do. Yes. If you are driving a car anywhere and you look at the people around you, you often see them on their phones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? People are telling us that's what they want to do. Tesla has a technology to allow that to happen. So he said that potentially by the end of this year. <laughs> two months. Right? Two months from now, that they'll be able to do that. Yeah. So think about what that means. You can now get a car that's the safest vehicle in the world, and you can be a distracted driver, and that's okay. Everybody's going to want that vehicle. The, the demand for Tesla vehicles, potentially, will go through the roof next year, because mm -hmm. who wouldn't want a car where they can text and drive? There's no other vehicle on the market that would allow you to do that. FSD sales go through the roof. Vehicle sales go through the roof, which is also nice for a hedge against, against robotaxi. If we think that there's some regulatory issues with robotaxi that, again, Elon's not that worried about, yeah. You've got now demand coming from people for the cars and FSD. They don't have to all go into the robotaxi network. Well, there are also regulatory concerns about allowing you to tax while you drive. So I don't think you can assume that everybody's going to be able to be allowed to do that. Like, unless you just pretend, like, they can't market it and you just do it. But, you know what I mean? Like, well, you, can't, you can't do it because it's a, illegal. It's illegal. Well, I think that could change very quickly. I, again, I think Tesla will have the data to show regulators that it's safe, that no, people nothing, don't need to monitor. Nothing changes quickly, but okay. I mean, you know what I mean? Like It's like a theoretical yeah. thing. I just can't assume that that's going to happen again next year. Yeah. I mean, maybe Elon is being overconfident about that, and I guess we should we should factor that in. Again, I'm not rushing to change my model and, and assume a massive increase in vehicle sales and FSD sales. Yeah. But that, to me, is a source of upside surprise for next year. Yeah. And potentially in a major way. Yeah, I remember we, on our show last week, you said that you didn't actually add in FSD sales. It's actually just... <laughs> That's right. You didn't bother because you don't know where it's vehicle, or if it's robotaxi. And, uh, but yeah, so it's, it's like not in your model, but yeah. it could, if regulation happens, work sooner than anybody thought. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Yeah, so that's incredible. Um, let's move on to the AI5 chip. One statement I thought that it was very impactful. He said it's about a third of the power of an NVIDIA Blackwell. Okay, so a third of the power demand for roughly the same performance, but at less than 10% of the cost of an NVIDIA chip. <laughs> that's, that's absolutely huge. Is that because NVIDIA charges 70% margin? Well, that's part of it, but even factoring that out, it's, it's way cheaper, right? Because the chip is purpose-built for exactly what Tesla needs. Mm. NVIDIA chips are kind of one-size-fits-all kind of approach. Mm -hmm. And I think we know that with most one-size-fits-all things, it doesn't really fit anything. Mm. You're, you're making sacrifices for that. So that's really impressive. And then, of course, the other thing I think that's really mind-blowing, and I need to think more about this, is this idea that they're going to buy as many chips as they can from TSMC and Samsung, and it's not going to be enough. And Intel. And potentially Intel. And they're going to make their own. <laughs> right. And if I was Tesla, I mean, Intel's been handed a couple of olive branches this year. One from the U.S. government, mm. one from NVIDIA, and the third one may now come from Tesla. If I'm Tesla and I'm thinking about a world where I'm going to produce millions of cyber taxis and billions of robots, mm -hmm. you need chips. So you probably want to have one, two, three, at least suppliers of those chips. Yeah. Right, so it wouldn't surprise me if, if Tesla makes some kind of deal with, with, with Intel and also builds their own fab one day, which is kind of mind-blowing. If Tesla goes down that route, it also tells me, I think, the confidence that Elon has in the number of chips that they need. You wouldn't sink $25 billion into a fab if the demand wasn't going to be there, right? What, what a horrible investment that would be if it's not going to pan out. Well, the beautiful thing, and I asked this question to Elon, like, it's like, it's so brilliant that AI5 will not only be used for cars, but it can be used for robots, yes. and it can be used for AI data centers. So that gives Tesla this ability to, oh, we screwed up, Robotaxi is not ready to roll out cars, you know, mm -hmm. okay, fine, then we'll you know, uh, car sales fall, then we'll use it for bots. <laughs> right. Or the other way around. Bots, yeah, you you know, the numbers are too low. Fine, we'll just make more robo-taxis. Or both of them suck, nothing happens. Yeah. We'll just make more aid. <laughs> like, it's like, it's like a uh, fail-safe, fail-safe yeah. kind of scenario. It's just brilliant. And no other company 
has that. No other company can say, well, I've got these three business lines that all use this. And then so then volume scale mm-hmm. and prices go down and everything's cheaper. Um, yeah. The, the other thing too, Herbert, on that is that these AI5 chips, the AI6 and so on, can be used literally in everything that needs AI. So it could be drones. Any, anything. Yeah. Could be yeah. megapacks yeah. as well. Yeah. Right? A- absolutely everything. Because NVIDIA, Jensen Wong and NVIDIA talks about how every single computer is going to be an AI computer. Yeah. So any device that has any computer at all potentially could could benefit from an AI5, AI6, AI7 chip yeah. at some point. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Wow. Okay, so what else? Um, well, he said that Tesla's already the biggest robot maker in the world, and that's true. He also talked about distributed inference, potentially one day having 100 gigawatts of distributed inference, right? That's, so that's a ma- massive supercomputer on wheels, mm-hmm. right? And potentially owners of vehicles could get some compensation for that. Uh, he talks about the car being bored, sitting around doing nothing. Because the AI seven chips are so powerful, they don't yeah. need that power. They can just use the one. Literally, that whole thing about <laughs> we only use ten percent of our brains. Yeah. So you can use ninety percent to do other things. <laughs> and I think it was kind of funny because conceptually, he's like, "Well, I thought about if I was trapped in a car, what, what would I want to do?" Right. <laughs> if, if Elon Musk's brain was all it's done was to drive, like you and I, right? I mean, today, right? The driving it becomes. Like so secondary, and that's yeah. why you are texting. Like people are like, because they're just bored. They're like, oh, yeah, it's nothing, right? right. It takes them the one tenth yeah. to drive. So what would the car do? That's right. Yeah. So I, I think that's that's all very exciting. You just get the sense that that he is, you know, just driven to bring this this future into the present as quickly as possible. Now, did you? S- yeah. Okay, that's great. We'll we'll cover this in the next show, right? Where your comment was. What he was saying prior to the compensation plan approved, and then what he's now saying after the compensation plan is approved. You, mm. you feel like there's a change? You, will you address that in the next show? Yes, we're going to talk about Optimus okay. in that show, and we'll, we'll hold those, those thoughts on that, because I think the Optimus news actually is probably the most, well, of course it's the most impactful. That. Of course he's That's right, that. I've got the Optimus shirt on today. <laughs> he's the bot bull. Yeah, okay, you're the bot bull. Yeah, and and again, Elon's reaffirmed that that is the future of Tesla. It'll be, Elon has said, and my models back him up, it's going to be at least 80% of the market value of the company one day. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, Herbert. Together. (laughs) Together. This is best. You're the best, man. As are you. Thank you. Serbert. No, no, I don't like Serbert. I don't know who that guy is. Yeah, okay, hopefully. (laughs) Until Herbert goes on vacation. Serbert tried to take over the channel, said he's upgraded. Fans loved it. Like, oh my God, what are you doing? We just have to give the fans what they want, Herbert. (laughs) All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. I've created a website that is the most comprehensive resource for the Tesla investor. Please check it out. Simply go to my website at herbertong.com.